Hello, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to yet another Adobe Live here in the UK. Now, if you're watching us on YouTube, that's absolutely fine. You can do that. But what you won't be able to do is get involved in the chat. No, no, you can't. The chat on YouTube is not the chat you're looking for at all. The chat you want is at behance.net slash Adobe Live. So come along, join our community, get involved. And that's where you can ask questions of our fabulous guest, who today is Matt Voice. Hi, Matt. How are you doing? Hello. Yeah, really good. Good. How are you? I'm good, thank you. It's really good to see you. And fab to meet you because I've never met you before. So that's oh, yeah. awesome Definitely. Uh, to meet you. Uh, so you're a designer uh, for motion graphics and graphics and all sorts of crazy things. I am. Um, yeah, and I've, I've been checking out your work. Perhaps stuff going on. I love kinetic type, which is a thing that you do. Uh, quite a bit and very well. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's all the rage still, which is good for me. Keeps me, yeah, uh, keeps me going along. No, it's real good stuff. So Come just on. before um, we took, we talked to you a little bit more about who you are and what you do. Let's uh, just give, first of all a shout out to some of the people in our community because we have a fab community here. Uh, Matt, we have Sean Kossel. Guten Tag, Sean. Hello. And we've got Angus McKenzie in here. We've got Anika in here. Hi. Uh, we've got Oliver. Hello, Oliver. Uh, we have Michelle. Hi, Michelle. And Ruth. And Sandrine. Hello, Sandrine. Bonjour. Uh, not that you probably use that anymore, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, there you are. And yeah, we've got them all in here, which is really good. I was hoping to see Gareth Hanks at some point, but I've not seen him just yet because there's a bit of after effects in here in all likelihood. So mm -hmm, anyway, mm -hmm. that's real good. Nice. Busy chat. So. Yeah, they're all good. Great, great people. Oh, Jane's here as well. Hi, Jane. Uh, so quite a few people that stream themselves here as well, which is really, really awesome. good. Perfect. So in a nutshell, why don't you tell our fabulous community mm -hmm. who you are and what you do? So uh, I'm a designer by trade, and mm -hmm. I got launched into sort of animation and motion graphics a couple of years ago, and then started combining that with my love of love of like typography and lettering um and yeah it's, it's kind of all i do now is animated type and animated lettering um it's kind of like my bread and butter so it's kind of like kinetic type yep. um fun expanding type and the best thing is I've, I've been able to do this for like clients all over the world and make a kind of career out of it so mm. um you know it's one of those things that i never thought i was going to end up doing but here I am and I'm, I'm loving it. Just messing around with letters, different typefaces, trying to give letters like real character and personality. Yeah. Um, I think there's something kind of special in that because we mm. see, you know, we see words and letters each day, every day, but to be able to give them a bit more life and fun and personality. Um, yeah. That's kind of where I thrive. It's where I, I love to be and what I love to be sort of um, brought to with briefs and different projects and different clients. Yeah, you've got some great work and you've got some you've got quite an impressive client list. I mean, you've worked with Nike, you've worked with BBC, uh, yeah. Lacoste, the LA Times, Facebook, loads, loads, loads of clients. So, yeah, 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 it's 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 just kind of, I don't know, it just happened organically, which is kind of the best mm. way, really. Um, you know, I started creating sort of animated stickers for myself, putting them out on Giphy, you kind of host yeah the sort of platform for stickers for like instagram and snapchat um i'll try and go back a bit and see if i can find some because i basically i was just kind of making experiments every day mm. um you know really random stuff like just anything that kind of came to mind if it was like a random word or um even sort of an animated icon um and so yeah i was doing tons of them and then they started to kind of trend and pick up traction which was amazing and then before I knew it, I was getting approached to do, you know, these projects for these different clients. It started off with Giphy, a commission for them, which was which was amazing. Sort of a first project in sort of uh, more of like a motion project that was freelance for me, which was great. And then, yeah, it, the, 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 commission, the commissions kept rolling in. It was project after project. Um, you know, I got to do like cool stuff for BBC, which was like televised and all these sort of kind of animations they, they, they started to sort of come together and you know it was it was just great it was something i never thought was going to happen um so yeah this is kind of my world and uh 
you know, I'm overjoyed to be doing this full time and for this to be my day job because it doesn't even feel like a day job anymore, which is probably where you want to be. The sweet yeah. spot, definitely the sweet exactly. spot. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly where you want to be. It is. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, some great stuff there and people can um, find you in a number of places. And I'm sure Tim will be helpful and pop that into the chat. But your website, yep. Matt, is uh, just Matt Voice. Matt with one T, right? Yep, um, one Voice, T. V-O-Y-C-E. So M-A-T v-o-y-c-e dot com that's it there we are so people can go along and look at that there and of course matt voice on instagram yes uh, as well so good stuff what are you going to be showing us today then uh, matt so i put a feeler out there on instagram to see what people would kind of want to see me create um and it turns out quite a few people want to kind of see um 36 days of type which is basically this kind of thing so um It's really cool and fun and powerful kinetic type. So I've basically chosen a random word and I'm going to create it in a very similar style and show how I kind of make things bounce and expand and, and really bring things to life on screen. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this is the kind of the direction we're heading in, which is cool. Really Fantastic. Exciting. That looks really, really good. Right. I can't wait to get into it. So I suppose <laughs> really. Uh, that would be a good idea. It's going down well in the chat already, by the way. There's people just following you on Instagram. Awesome. A couple of people doing that, few people doing that. So that's really good. And uh, yeah, Great loving what you're doing. Uh, and you've got lots of Yorkshire people here, so you're in good company. Oh, amazing. That's so always good. There you are. <laughs> repping, repping the county. There we are. Okay, I can speak Yorkshire. Does that count, so Jane? <laughs> <laughs> Dear, yeah, oh dear. Sure. Okay, fab. Right. So then let's go. Show okay. away. Please do. Amazing. So uh, start off in Illustrator, mm-hmm. as I always do. Good, good. Work at 1400 pixels. Don't know why, but it, it works. Yep. And the word I'm going to go for is lucky. Um, just kind of came up. Just thought it was kind of like a nice word. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be fun to animate. So, um, whenever I start anything like this, um, you know, I just type out the words. And then just flick through a font, really. The, the way that I create things, I need fonts that aren't like super complicated, don't have a ton of edges, um, especially when they're expanded, because a lot of the stuff I do is expanded type. So, um, you know, like stuff like this, where it's already condensed, it always works really well. So when I expand things, I can already see that there's only a few sort of anchor points and a few sort of um, bezier handles that I'm going to have a mess around with. So that kind of thing, you know, I always try and keep that in mind and and choose something that's going to make it easier for me further down the line. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to look for something cool, something that's going to be easy to kind of animate and have fun with. Um, Druk's a good font for kinetic type. It's yep. got loads of different weights and sort of font styles, which is really good. Um, I'm going to look for something. I have to ask, have you ever hmm. seen the kinetic? Is this, now, this is going back a few years, but it's such a good example. Yeah. There's a film called V for Vendetta. I don't know if you've ever seen it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, so there's a particular speech in there um, about governments. Uh, people shouldn't be afraid of their governments. Governments should be afraid of their people, all of that stuff. But mm-hmm. that was that was put to kinetic type in about sort of within the last ten years, I'd say. Um, but I don't know if you've ever seen that. But it's an amazing example. No, I've not. Really, really good. Uh, I know, got... know the film, but I haven't. I haven't mm. seen that. Yeah. Mm. Well, it's one of my favourite movies. That one to be perfectly honest but it is it is yeah. very good it is great mm. fun um so yeah i kind of expand my typefaces yeah and then because i'm working in blocks i try to kind of plan out where the letters are going to go and where they're going to sit um so i normally i pretty much if i was doing this i'd just draw some kind of random boxes based on uh five letters yep. just to kind of see see where I can kind of put letters. So basically what I'll be doing is moving these into the center. 
Just trying to get a feel for where they go. It's a, it's a bit like a sliding puzzle approach almost, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's kind of like a, a, a pre-animated guide yeah. um, for how I'm going to approach it. Do you do you storyboard some of these things sometimes to work them out, or do you just kind of get in and go with it and go with um, the cut? Yes, it depends what it is. When it's client based, I do have to mm. kind of storyboard and I have to make sure that um, that the client kind of gets where I'm going with it and they understand that um, it's more like because most of the stuff I do is quite short, it'll be um, like three or four frames. So the start, start, middle, and end is three, which is normally works really well. So people can see kind of what it is and how it's going to how it's going to end up in the middle and then how it's going to finish like the end frame. So. Um, so yeah, that that tends to tends to help a lot of client work. Um, I find it works well for them to see how I'm going to do stuff. Um, so I'm kind of like I'm kind of happy with that, and I can kind of see how it's going to sort of plan out if I'm going to animate it. I like to make some things bigger, um, you know, really emphasize some some kind of letters. Yep. And then sometimes I'll sort of drag things out and just see you know how that's working. Um, and then colors, colors is obviously super important. Um, so I tend to use a few sites. One in particular is really cool. It's on Instagram. It's called Topia Tones. And as you can see, it's just oh. color palettes, just mm. loads of different cool color palettes. Um, stuff that's, you know, really easy to, to pick up from. And it's got hex codes as well, yep. which obviously is like super helpful. Yes. Um, so I normally, I'll either find a few and kind of screenshot them instead of typing out hex codes and then just color pick as I'm going along. Yeah. Um, because I'm going lucky, I kind of want something with green in, um, you know, just to kind of match that sort of stereotypical look color. Yep. Um, so I kind of like this. That's quite nice. Um, and then I can kind of tweak things as I'm going along. Um, so jump straight back into Illustrator. And then I will I'll close some of the windows down. And then I'll chuck a few screenshots in. Do you ever try color.adobe.com? Do you ever try that one? Uh, I've not actually, no. Because the, the advantage there, of course, because it's connected to Creative Cloud, is that you can bring in uh, a color theme directly into Creative Cloud libraries or directly into the application. Oh. into swatches that super would useful. save time yeah mm, have an investigate on that definitely have to have a look at that yeah i like it it's not the only one i use to be honest i, I do use a couple of others uh as well but um but that is one of the main ones i use yeah nice but i'm definitely, definitely going to check out the instagram one there's yeah. a really nice one as well on cinematic um color themes as well i've seen oh nice it's around there so mm. sounds cool um, yeah, there's a, there's a few sites. There's also one I use called, um, what's it called? I think it's Color Hunt. Yep, Color Hunt. Um, yeah. and, and again, you know, color palettes. And I guess the beauty of this is you can choose by sector, so like rainbow mm. or uh, themed in like Christmas. Mm. Um, so it's another good site, super easy to use. But again, you know, you have to screenshot and then color pick and you kind of go yeah. from there. So yeah, just kind of plotting out colors now. Yep. Um, I sometimes like to use more of like a, a muted black than like a, a, you know, like a full sort of black pitch. Um, and then I quite like this, this kind of cream color that's coming in yeah. as well. That's kind of nice. I'm just trying to get balance really yeah. of, of, of things and, you know, see kind of how it works. Um, I think I'd quite like to add maybe another little something in here. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Shamrock. <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's Sorry. Right going. <laughs> no, it's good. You're predict predicting everything I'm doing. It's good. Um, so I'm going to go into something called Now, the Noun Project. And basically yep. loads of designers sort of create simple icons. And, uh, I'm glad great I could... I'm glad I kept my mouth shut because I was just going to say, are you going to use the noun project? Really? <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah. 
that you can yeah. get um there's a panel you can get in you can bring that into illustrator you know so you can search directly in there what with noun project yeah it's an extension oh, really? for the noun project yeah oh i i did not know that mm. that's another thing i'm learning more than uh, everybody else there <laughs> sorry <laughs> <laughs> it's all good um so yeah i'm just gonna nick a little icon in just to give another sort of mm. fun element And then, yeah, this is it's, it's kind of like a really rough guide as to where I think I want things to go. And although obviously nothing's kind of stretching or animated yet, it just it just acts as like a really simple template. Mm -hmm. um, and then what I also will do is I'll cut out all my back layers, make new layers. Um, I'll just call them boxes for now and sling yeah. them in so that they're split out on a layer. Call this tight. And then sometimes in After Effects, I use a panel that kind of extracts all the different layers. But if you know, Overlord, you don't have, yeah, something similar to that. It's yeah. from a motion design school. Yeah, um, I did a course with them years ago, which was quite handy, mm. and they gave it gave us kind of part of that. So I again, I use Overlord layers. But I'm disappointed every time I use it because I kind of think that functionality should exist in Creative Cloud anyway. <laughs> just... <laughs> I know what you mean because it's especially because I work with like shape layers all the time. Yeah. Um, it's it's it would be sort of like really handy. Mm. Um, so yeah. Um, but yeah, that's kind of like my Illustrator sort of layout. Everything's I might just tweak these a little bit more. Just get them a bit sort of browner. Um, and yeah, that's my template, if you like. Nice. So then we'll go straight, let me just rename that because as people will be able to tell because I spell everything wrong, my typing is awful. Um, and that's going to bug me. So then, yeah, I'll jump into uh, After Effects where the hard work really starts. Yeah. Uh, sling my composition in straight from Illustrator. So it brings in all of my layers which is super helpful and easy um and then yeah you'll see a few of the panels here that i kind of use which as you say things are similar to overlord like you can extract layers um you can move like keyframes and clone keyframes and things like that so it's super helpful um but when i open my composition everything's there and ready to go so what i tend to do is create shapes from vector layers delete any stuff i don't think i'm going to use because everything's going to be sort of custom now and, and yeah. done by done by hand. Um, I'll extract all of these boxes. I'll just rename these. Um, can you still hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's still good. Yeah, just watching you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can definitely still hear you. We're all good. I think my uh, mic has died. <laughs> Uh, no, we can hear you. Oh, is it still working? Yeah, yeah, it's still working. All right. Yeah, yeah. It don't. We've had a week of we've had a week of of the odd technical glitch. So. There we go. <laughs> oh, but no, no, Don't we're all that. good. Yeah, yeah, we're all good. Yeah. Don't worry. I'll have to um take them out. Um, I can't hear what's going on on the computer for some reason. All oh, right. Okay. Um. Is is that still clear enough though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can hear okay. you. Yeah, yeah. We're all good. All right. Cool. Yeah. Um, don't worry. So yeah, I'll start sort of naming my layers. And then I also like to keep quite tidy. So yeah. if anything like this, I'll recolor things just so I know they kind of belong together. Yep, that's smart. Any color, as long as they're different enough from the other ones. Yep. Each. Nice. I don't know if you if I don't know uh, how many if, if you've caught of our streams before, but we uh, we have Joe on here uh, who is an absolute demon for tidiness inside of After Effects. Nice. Yeah. It's got to be done. You can yeah. lose your way so easily. Yeah. Yes, that's it. 
and then uh, just center up some anchor points and make sure everything's centered. Mm. And then, yeah, so now I've kind of got that that kind of layout. I'm just going to add a bit of a, a green background so you get, don't get any sort of overlapping lines. Um, so now everything's going to kind of work through outlining shapes. So I work a lot with paths. So I use a lot of the search bar and kind of start making my keyframes. And I'm kind of like known for giving letter forms and characters a bit more bounce and a bit more fun. So okay. I always kind of add this overshoot style, which is just kind of like my thing. Yep. So I just start kind of playing with these sort of different. So just to give things a bit more bump. Yep. All right. It's good animation practice to do yeah. that. So absolutely. It's a bit of squash and stretch. Yeah. Gives the, gives it a more fluid, more, uh, more believable motion than just a static. So just that over, like, over, did you, what did you call it? Overstretch or uh, overreach? Like, like, overshooting kind of thing. Yep. Um, yep. so you start to get like, you know, you get the your basic kinetic type, um, mm. but I'm not always, because I'm working in like these boxes, I don't kind of like how you get these awkward spaces. So yeah, I'm going to be really like pedantic and, um, do it a different way. So yeah, don't worry. We've got, we've got absolutely tons of time. So we, we've got, we've still got a good over an hour yet. So we're all good. Oh, so just relax into it. It's all good. Jane is um, asking in the chat, uh, if you weren't telling us your process, how long would an animation like this usually take you? Um, I'd probably speed through something like this with the illustration side. If I've got it pre-planned or it's sort of in my mind, mm. um, probably about 45 minutes, 30 minutes yeah. max. Um it's the having the plan part that takes the time, right? That's the thing that... Uh, yeah, definitely. Because yeah. um, then, that obviously, if, if you're planning that, does take... It adds a lot more sort of time onto, onto what you're doing. Mm. Um, and Anika is asking, um, do you feel now this kind of kinetic type is trending because she's seeing it more and more? Yeah, I definitely am. Um, you know, it's, yeah. it's kind of like everywhere now it's it's like super popular and people are definitely sort of getting into it more which is it's, it's, it's great to see because mm. you know it's it's just nice to see type being explored and sort of different ways and seeing how people sort of interact with typography is always interesting because everyone's got mm. like a, a different take on it as well which is is great so that's good it gives it real personality yeah 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 I'm still not happy with this L, so I'm going to... Uh... Jim, the one I've got in the corner of my eye right now on a separate screen is your yay Mexican wave, and I just love that. <laughs> yeah, that's... So uh, good. That was some of the first kind of illustrated stickers I, that yeah. I, I'd done. Um, and yeah, that yay is like one of my best, best performing sort of social stickers I've got. It's on something like, I don't know, it's just over 500 million uses wow um, which is insane wow. on like instagram and snapchat and i don't know where else they use them um so it's yeah it's it's sort of yeah it kind of exploded when that's that's kind of the stuff that led me on to to doing what i do for clients now doing those animated stickers and playing with that kind of fun type yeah um yeah because i mean if you've got something that's that successful you're going to have corporates and, and personalities who are going to want their own version of something created. Yeah. So no, it's great that you've cut yourself out. Really nice, good fun corner. I mean, it's there's yeah. very little to be miserable about there. I mean, that's like yeah. one of the happiest Instagrams I've seen. In weeks. <laughs> it is. It is very happy. There's a lot of uh, yeah. joy and color and fun mm. there to be had, which is nice. So I'm just. Um, just kind of trying to give this a bit more sort of flavor, just fill these spaces because these boxes are going to be like kind of really important. Yeah. Um, so I always tend to work letter by letter, um, just seeing how it kind of works. Yeah. Um, I work a lot with expressions and the graph editor as well. Yeah. So um, you're seeing me doing a lot of this kind of adding some nice sort of ease and, and sort of speed to things. Again, it, it gives it more personality and a bit more fun. Um, 
which is it's super important in sort of yeah. like my work um and then for this kind of thing i've been in a lot of parenting as well because i want yeah. some of these some of these boxes to sort of move around so at the same time um you know the type i want the type to kind of stick with that box yeah so for example if i'm messing around with the l um i normally just do this letter by letter and try mm -hmm. and stick to a specific time so i get like seamless loops so like six seconds yeah that's kind of perfect especially if i'm going to make this into a gif or something afterwards because then mm -hmm. you know file size you got to think of file size especially for yeah. like clients because they always moan that things are too big but yeah you know, that's where the good stuff happens. You can't get loads of cool animation in like a tiny little GIF. Yep. Um, so yeah, um, so yeah, I'm just kind of just seeing if I'm happy with how that's looking. Um, Another great thing there is that you answered in perfect timing a question that's popping up in the chat, asking people were starting to ask if you were adjusting the curves in the in the motion, in the graph editor, and and so that's great that they've seen that. So yeah, yeah, I am. It's uh, it's how you you give this kind of stuff real life and real fun um and you know it's things can be very flat um without it so like for example if i'm uh if i'm kind of messing with this and if i wanted it to kind of loop around um you know you have you have these sort of handles and i'm going quite fast but yeah. it's that used to the, the speed of my workflow mm. um so you get like a good you get the impact which is kind of what i'm kind of looking for in something like this um you know it's fun and it's it's got a bit more life to it than it just being sort of flat and static um so yeah i start to work with each letter and then yeah i'll, I'll parent them to sort of different layers but i also need to think about how it's going to sort of finish at the end so it's mm -hmm. going to loop seamlessly so i often copy my key actually i won't do that because i might come with a different color box um so i'll start playing with the anchor points of my background boxes so this is where i use stuff like motion tools because you can move anchor points easier yeah so when i'm sort of looking at scaling something um Cool. I can really start to sort of move things out. Um, just gives it a nice bit of, so you start to get, I change background color to something lunatic because I can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> so then you start to get these different shapes sort of interacting. Um, and then I'll duplicate any sort of layers up. And then because I want things to loop, I need to make sure certain keyframes are in the right place. And again, you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute when I'm moving sort of anchor points. Yeah. And switching around keyframes. That I'm going to start to get sort of this cool overlap. Um, and if I line things up, nice. Line things up properly, and yep. make sure my sort of ex not my expression, my speed graphs are the same. Then you get like a really nice sort of seamless switch. Yes. Um, so for something like this, I'd normally kind of switch the colours up, and this is where my planning is going to go out the window because. <laughs> the boxes are going to merge. Um, okay. So what I might do for now is just recolor that. And it's still quite balanced. But yeah, you get like these nice sort of switches now. Yes. And then what I tend to do is because these, you know, these shapes are the same, they've got the same amount of um, sort of points in them. Um, what I do is I'll sort of grab one of these paths. So it saves basically like trying to reanimate things. Um, and again, copy these paths. Yeah. Make sure I'm on the right one. Reverse these. So now I'll start to get like 
more of a sort of flowing motion. So you start to get like nice repeats and nice sort of fun things happening and you know it gives you more just more fun with the yeah. animation. Nice. Um so yeah, but because I'm a bit of a perfectionist, I don't kind of like how when this moves into the center, it, yeah. it doesn't feel like it's fully centralized, central line. Okay. So what I might do is I might use the scale instead. Right, okay. And sort of bring it bring it right down to like 20. And then just kind of again work with the speed graph. So you get more just more kinetic type and more kind of fun with it really. Groovy. As Tim just said as well. <laughs> groovy. Very groovy. Oh yeah, um, groovy. Baby. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, expressions, like I mentioned, I work with a lot of expressions. So loop out is a great sort of bog standard expression. Yeah. Um, so if I go back, you, I press like alt and click and then you get the nice expression panel. Yep. Stop playing with like looping in and looping out. And again, now when I play that, it just, it's a nice constant flow. Yeah. So you get like this nice, you know, things are starting to sort of come together. Um, you can see we have some nice, like sort of constant movement and motion, which is yeah. it's really cool. Um, nice. So I might look at, I might look at moving a few things around so that you, you get things straight away. So nothing's kind of static. It's kind of the, the, the joy in having it all like moving at the same time. Um, So Anika's asking, do you use any other plugins apart from the Motion School one? Do you use anything from AE Scripts? Or... Um, I don't know if Easy Copy, this one here is from AE Scripts, um, okay. but this is super, super handy. So if I'm, um, so for example, if I want this K to animate in the same, using the speed graph, if I wanted, if I, if I did something really random here and like sort of pulled this a bit here and you know, things that are really hard to replicate again and again to get them perfectly. Um, mm -hmm. You can use Easy Copy to, if I go down to my K, go to scale. So if I was, if I was, it's, it's better for more like paths and things because they're, they're hardest to sort of replicate. So um, if I was like doing a scale here and things are slightly different, let's just say I'm blowing this out to fill the box. You can use easy copy to collect to, to collect and sort of copy the exact amount of keyframes. So copy and then you paste or you ease and paste them onto that so that now it has the same, it will have the same flow. So for example, if I go into my speed graph, they're exactly the same now. Whereas, you know, you might be trying to go on here and you're trying to, it starts to get a bit, a bit crazy especially if you've, like I said, you've made something that's a bit different and you try and line things up. So something like Easy Copy is really good for, you know, just copying keyframes and copying the expression and the speed that's on certain things. Yeah, um, that's cool. So, yeah, I think it's, yeah. I'm not sure where it's from because, again, it was something I got from Motion Design School. So I don't know if it's from um, A scripts or if it's something they've come up with. I'm not really sure. Um I'm going to yeah. just find out for you right now. Awesome. Uh, it's AE scripts. Oh, perfect. There you go. Then. He's copy. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. That's cool. There we go. I just tried opening the uh, AE scripts manager on my machine just to see if it was something I've got, but I haven't. So, but I will do. Yeah. Super, <laughs> I will do super, now. Super handy. Yeah. yeah. So now I'm starting to add sort of more motion to it. So to try and, you know, change the weight because a lot of the stuff that I work on is sort of it changes weight and it's got like a fun sort of yeah you know elasticity to it um so what I, I think do is it in the chat I think Sandra I'm just going to try and make sense of something in the chat um does your workflow involve taking care of each layer during the whole timeline first 
or do you take care of how all the layers act on any given time? I'm not, not entirely sure if I'm interpreting that question correctly. Um, so basically, do you approach it on a layer by layer basis? I think is the, is the I, question there. Yeah, I kind of depend on what I'm animating. If it's like lettering, then mm. yeah, I, I do letter by letter, letter instead of starting to get involved with all these. I kind of just work, I work my way down or depending on what kind of animation it is, I might work, um, I might work, if things are affecting other things, like if other layers are going to knock into something else, then yeah, then I have to start, you know, planning ahead and, and thinking about where, um, where things are going to, are going to sort of um, sit and move and interact with each other. So it depends, it does depend on the animation really. Right. Um, so now I'm looking at, I'm kind of happy with the, how that is because there's going to be a, a lot, a kind of lot going on here. Cool. Um, so I need to start thinking about how it's going to loop out. But to be honest, I might just move this over to one second just because okay. I'm a bit. Cool. Uh, Arturo, by the way, is saying, Matt, you are the best, dude. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> too kind. Too kind. Very kind. So, so how long have you been doing this? This is the this is one of the questions I should ask. Really, is um, um, I've kind of been I've been doing it for only type. I've only been doing it for like two years, really. Oh wow! Um, so before that, I was creating, I was creating sort of my own um, static sort of lettering posts, and then because I learned motion, I started to then you know, infuse that with it and sort of really experiment with how that can sort of work hand in hand. Um, but I've been, des I've been designing, I mean, I finished uni in like 2011, so I've been, de been designing for, um, you know, Ten quite years. a long time now. Mm. Um, but motion wise, yeah, that was, that's, it was only relatively new to me. Mm. That was um, a good investment, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's weird. I never wanted to be a motion designer, but I used to, you know, when I left uni because I did modules on it, I kind of hated it. It wasn't my thing. Mm. Um, and then yeah, I don't know. I just fell just fell into it, um, and here here I am now, just doing it for a for a living, which is it's, it's nuts. It sounds bizarre to say that. Where did you study? Just at uh, Sheffield Hallam. Sheffield Hallam. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um. So yeah, yeah. Sheffield Hallam, and then uh, ended up just north in Leeds. Yeah. So we had George, it's funny enough, we had George Laws on on Monday. Yeah, yeah. I, I follow me on Instagram, sort of. Um, yeah. Knowing, so he was yeah. Sheffield Hallam as well, I think. I think he was a visiting lecturer there, I think, for a little while. Yeah, he was. Yeah. He was Hallam, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've followed him for a few years now. He's uh, yeah. an amazing illustrator. There's a synergy there, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We should collab on something, maybe. Mm, I think so. Because um, I love how his he's free. He's kind of freehand as well. It's not like yeah. not everything's super planned. He kind of just goes into it and it's just, yeah, it just flows. It's, it's, it's an amazing thing to be able to do, mm. to be able to think like that and illustrate off, off the whim like that. It's mm. fantastic. Um, so I'm just kind of here working on the the loop out. So you have to be careful when if I sort of want the same letter to appear at the front and the end. If I'm sort of working over here on my timeline and I'm copying a letter over because I've got it linked to a layer that's now compressed. Um, if I try and bring it over, um, you'll see that it's. So what kind of frame rate are you working at here? Just out of interest as well. Oh uh, yeah. So um, I work at 12 frames per second most yep. of the time. Um, yeah. It's just, I, I kind of love working at that frame rate. It gives it more yep. of a, a handmade feeling. It's kind of like, that's like my style and it's kind of how I'm sort of known for, mm -hmm. for working in sort of lettering and it's um, yeah, it's just got something to it. It's just something nice that, um that works works really well and um it's i know you can the more kind of frames you take out the more sort of hand-drawn it feels but you can get to a certain 
level where it's um, you go past the hand draw hand drawn feeling and it just starts to uh, it doesn't kind of doesn't kind of work. It looks more like a mistake. So um, like sixteen frames as well is kind of like a sweet spot um, that works really well as well. Um, and then I also do some things in like sixty frames per second, which really sort of um, it really it's got like a very strange feel to it. It's um, it's hard to explain. Um, if you go on my Instagram, there's one that's like TGIF and yeah. that's a 60 frame per second one. And you'll see that's, it's just got a really strange feeling to it. The more right. frames you add to it, it yeah. looks very kind of coded. And people ask me like, is this, is this coded? And it's like, no, no, it's all just done by, um, by frame rates and yeah. different frame rate can really sort of alter your uh, composition. Um, so now you see, I've sort of looped up this first one. Mm. Nice. I kind of don't like how my L sits like that, so I'm gonna just. Yeah, I like the TGIF one, by the way. It's nice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're all nice. They're all joyful. I think. <laughs> so. so I might just shift this stuff over. <laughs> Moretti is asking in the chat, uh, well, saying in the chat, hi, Matt, love your Instagram bio write-up, non-award-winning type motion designer. Yeah, yeah. Um, she thinks uh, it's brilliant. Any it's backstory? Going, it's going strong, that. <laughs> uh, I'll be gutted if I ever win an award. Um, I'll lose that title. <laughs> it's true, it's true, but uh, I don't know. I think when I kind of left uni, it was kind of like ingrained that, you know, awards like DNAD and, um, like young guns and things like these that those sort of like really prestigious yeah. awards were like they kind of made you as a designer and when I sort of entered some and cause didn't really get anywhere with them and you know I probably felt a bit bitter at the time um, mm. I made that title for myself and uh, and yeah it's kind of just stuck which is nice yeah for now um, so I'm just now watching the loop over and over just to make sure I'm kind of happy with how it does start and finish um, it's quite nice to be able to not, to kind of not be able to tell on some of these animations where the sort of end and start point is. Yeah. So after you've started watching it, it's just kind of going on and on. Um, so I think I'm quite happy with that. Yeah, it's good. I might just pick this faster again. So I'm, again, then I'm just sort of holding option or, um, oh, I think it is on Windows keyboards and I'm just sort of dragging the keyframes along to kind of speed them up or slow them down to yep. see what kind of works better. I love that shortcut. It's very, very useful. Yeah, it's handy. I only learned yeah. it a couple of months ago and it's sort mm -hmm. of, uh, I used to sit there, you know, selecting and moving each individual and one along. along yeah, and, yeah. Uh, God, there's shortcuts mm -hmm. for everything and that's what you've got to remember. Mm -hmm. There's always a, a quicker way to do something in After Effects and it, really speeds up how you work and saw your workflow. So I might, it might look like I'm watching this over and over and over, but it's just to get that sort of loop. Yeah, no, it's important. It's, loop. Yeah. 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 Not it's a like, problem at all. So happy with L. So I'll lock them so I don't mess around and shift them about. And then uh, there's a few things. There's something I, I missed I should have done earlier. Basically when I do some of these, um, Animate, animations, I try and make sure that um, I'm adding in anchor points <coughs> for um, animation to make my life easier. Mm. So you see here, if, for example, if I'm uh, dragging this U, if I drag that, you start to get some really weird shapes. Um, and you can, you can really like kind of move things and, um, you know, make things look a bit more kind of stable. Um, basically make sure that the letters still look like the letter they're supposed to be. Mm. Um, so you start to get that, you get like nice curves, but um, sometimes what I'll do is in Illustrator, <coughs> excuse me, Sorry. in Illustrator, I will, it's basically the same in After Effects and Illustrator, I'll add, an, add a vertex. So I'll kind of like come in super close, um, add an extra point at the top and bottom, 
and then so move. you can split it yeah 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 just move them into the center you didn't have to be perfect because mm. you don't notice at that scale um and now when i go to do this if i click on these i'll get a nice straight path which is kind of what i would prefer normally but actually having looked at the typeface because it's quite curvy like this c's got a nice nice curve it's not as kind of straight as something like um sharp grotesque or druk where it's very sort of formulaic um i'm going to take them off and i'm going to try and work with the natural curves of the letters so i'll kind of come to the beginning and then yeah again just start to play with these um and I'm going to add like a bit of a sort of overshoot and bounce to things, kind of what I'm known for. And just looking at how these letters compress. Because what would be quite nice with this, after doing that, because I keep forgetting about my font change and my weight shifts, is yep. I might start this off like super thin. Yep. So it really changes when you're sort of expanding it. So again, I'm just kind of moving anchor points. A good way, if you're unsure of how to stretch a letter, is to basically um, type it out. So if I'm looking for like a U, um, a good thing to do is is use the use the font or use a similar font, and basically just change the weight. Yep. So you could use that as like a template um, and drag your, you know, you could change the opacity on it and then start messing again with your U. And then, you know, you can really see how to drag things in. Um, depends how you want to do it. But because I'm a bit more, um, I like to sort of really mess with the fonts, then I really kind of kind of go in and start messing with it myself. Just do you ever use out. morph? Do you ever use morphing? Uh, no, I don't actually. No. What's, what is that? Is that another? Um... It's a way you can change. You need to. You need to use use pass in conjunction with it. But it's a way you can change and masks rather. Um, it's a way you can morph from one thing to another. So if you had two particular states, you can morph between them. Oh, nice. No, I've never really mm. um, kind of looked at that. Mm. Um, again. Like we mentioned, there's so many, <clears throat> so many ways to do things, and so many easier oh, ways yeah. to do things. Like I'm sure, you know, yeah. I've been told told before. Like people have said to me, "Why don't you just do it like this?" And it's just not not my style. Everyone's mm. different how they work, really. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, you will never, ever, ever know it all. No, no, no. no one will. And as soon as, as soon as you did, something would have changed further back that, yeah. that resets the way everything yeah. else rolls. You know, exactly. So. It all changes all the time. Mm. There's always an easier way or a better way. It depends what you consider better. If it's not what you know, then just stick to what you know. It's whatever works for you. That's yeah, exactly. The thing. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm just kind of looking at this, this you now to kind of give it a bit more character. Points along. Playing with the Bezier handles. Again, just so you get a nice equal layer and letter. Even. Uh, basically looking to have the, the thickness the same all the way around. Um, and that's not far off. It's fine for what, what this is really, because it's not meant to be perfect. I'll add some textures and some sort of rough to it. And now I'll play that, you'll see, it blows up. But what I want to do is I want to just fill this space again, make the most of it. And then uh, some of this out. All these nice. around. So I'm really getting like a nice, really thick letter now. Mm. And again, messing with the convert to vertex tool, which is basically your anchor point curves and your bezier handles. 
and you see you just start to get you get these nice big letters yep. so now i'm gonna play that it's got a nice sort of blowing blowing up kind of feel to it six and as always i'll add a bit of overshoot to this just to give it a bit more fun and i might actually spread this up here but make sure i do it for all my keyframes yeah that's kind of nice but i've done the wrong way around you get like a nice kind of pop down into the speed graph now what i like there with 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 that particular thing and also because of its 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 size within that layout is the fact that it forms a really nice big smile it does for me yeah. that's you know yeah it's quite cool it's quite nice. cool to add some little uh, eyes to it and <laughs> sort of make it make it fun and even more positive yeah. kind of thing so i'm not gonna flick every single box like this because it's gonna start to get a bit mental um but i might i'm still gonna kind of loop this out and this is where easy copy comes in because like if i go on this now you'll see if you look at how that blows in and then how it blows out it's it's kind of it might look all right but it's not i kind of want it to be the same so it's got like a really nice loop so i'll copy yeah. those four keyframes and now if i go on here and go on ease does it for me basically so now if i kind of watch that it might need something in between, a bit static. Actually, I'm going to go back on myself because I think it looked better before. Okay. Yeah, that does look better. So I've just gone back onto my undone that and sort of gone backwards. Um, and then I might to give this just a bit more kind of something is I might just change the weight again, just so that it's not staying static throughout my whole animation. Bring all these around about, mess with these. Again, trying to look for that perfect U shape, that nice smile. Now, in the chat, uh, Daryl is noting that uh, you you appear to have a good handle on, uh, no pun intended, by the way, on uh, on type manipulation. Yeah. Uh, and wonders, have you, have you ever created your uh, own typeface or is that something you would have considered is uh no i've not but i am um, i've spent a long time in um like one of my previous agency jobs um everything was very custom type based we were mm. doing um we were kind of doing stuff for um places like netflix and universal pictures so all these yeah. massive sort of these sort of big names and because a lot of the stuff was kind of going to be sold. You, you need to sort of work into the typeface. So it's not just like you've used a typeface, you've made it more customized and more, you know, it's, it's a bit more unique and sort of premium. Yeah. Um, so um, we used to sort of mess a lot with typefaces and really sort of get into the nitty gritty of making something different and unique. Um, mm. So yeah, I did that a lot. And that was a, an agency called Analog or made yeah. by Analog and they're based in Leeds. So. Yeah. Um, check them out as well. They make some really cool stuff, loads of different sort of sectors and just mm. cool, just cool work. But there, yeah, I learned a lot about sort of really messing with typefaces and, and learning about, you know, customizing mm. things and, um, you know, pulling these around and sort of just getting these shapes that just come from practice. Um, yeah. you know, like some of the first sort of animations I did when I was pulling letters around, I mean, uh, I think I've deleted them now cause I'm probably embarrassed, but they were, uh, they were awful. They were just. I just, I, I, looking back now at myself, you know, I was learning, but I could tell I didn't have a clue what I was kind of doing. So, um, use practice, you know, practice to get those sort of letter forms right. Um, yeah. I do quite like how that is on an in, but I kind of would like this to be sort of seamless. So, um, what I might do is you can have, you can get expressions for looping paths because you can't just do loop out. It doesn't work it comes up with this error and it's just, it just doesn't have it. So you can okay. get expressions for looping out um, paths and things like this. I've got from um, forums like Creative Cow and, and on Adobe, yeah. you know, there's tutorials and forums there where people help each other out. So 
if I whack that expression in here and let's say I shift this. Do you ever pre-compose any of these just to make it, or do you prefer to see all of the layers in the same place? Yeah, I kind of prefer to see it all in the same yeah. place. Um, with some of my other first extensive types, I thought it was really super complicated and I was doing, um, I might do it for the Clover, um, the Shamrock. Yeah. I was doing radiating colours, like, because I started to add so many more layers and sort of complexity to the timeline, then I'd pre-compose stuff and, yeah. you know, make it easier. Um, but if not, I mean, sometimes I'll use the hide and just to make my timeline clean, just hide them off for the L. So I know that's, that's done and dusted and I don't have to sort of, look at that and it's also good to see then how many more layers you've got left to animate on something like this mm. um so yeah if i'm going back to adding that uh, path in so what i could do is now that should loop if i i might start that there so now i'm going to play that it's going to loop out perfectly yep um, I'll bring it over a bit. So now when you're playing the animation, you kind of won't be able to tell where it starts and where it ends and not everything's going to look the same at the beginning, which is kind of what I'm going for with that. So it's got quite It's that nice... thing, isn't it, of being just that one stage shy of it being a complete reversal. Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. I see that. I've seen that a lot. When I, back when I was teaching this kind of stuff, that was a thing people would do quite frequently. They'd create something that the start state and the end state were in exactly the same place in the middle state somewhere else. And yeah. And they say, but it seems like it's jumping. And so that's because you're just in exactly the same place. It's not jumping, pausing. And um, and it's just that thing. It's just being that one frame shy yeah. of where you actually want to be for it to work yeah. properly. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise you get, yeah. you know, you get the awkward jumps and you get the yeah. awkward sort of you know, it's just not a perfect loop then and you start yeah. to, you really notice then where the animation starts and ends. Yeah. I think that's, you know, that's part of the, the beauty of doing something like this is, mm. is being able to trick the viewer into thinking that they think they know where it started, but when it gets going, it's like, oh, I actually don't know where this animation started, especially if you're viewing on something like Instagram where it is, um, it's playing automatically. You might not remember the start frame and it's going to start to be a bit like, hmm, I'm really not sure where that kind of started. Yeah. Um, this is another thing I should have done. I think I, I rushed through my illustration stage and look at my letters properly. But basically, I don't like how that stretches okay. um, because a lot of these are quite smooth. I'm not looking for a typeface or a letter that's a bit more clunky. I mean, I can do that actually. Yeah. To kind of, yeah, actually that works. Because what I was going to suggest was... I was going to basically remove these awkward little extra points in here. Yeah. So get rid of them. Yeah. And now when it animates and when it stretches out, I won't have that awkward sort of square kind of feed into it. Um, mm. So I'm just kind of seeing how this one can um, stretch. But what I might do with this one is I might keep this moving constantly. Um, so I kind of like how that's moving up and down. But again, I think I want the weight to change. So I'll start coming into my letter. And watching what I'm dragging and just dragging mm. things about. So I'm just answering a question here in the chat um, from Jane, who's mm. saying about, uh, from her point of view, when I don't realise just how much work has gone into something, it's hard to appreciate it properly. Um, and I've answered with the easiest way to appreciate it, and also to learn at the same time is to try and recreate it yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. It's, <laughs> um, it does help to kind of have a go. Yeah. I think it's... I've talked about this in a, in a few kind of podcasts and, and sort of blogs now that's sure it's important to put your own spin on it. You know, if you're, if it's something you're going to share kind of socially, um, you know, if like someone was looking to recreate this, then, you know, 
maybe change the colors, change the words and put your spin on it. Don't kind of make it identical. And it's, it's kind of the best way for you to learn and for you to mm. explore your own style as well, which I've, I've found in the past by, by myself copying and duplicating other people's works, but looking at styles and seeing how I can add something of my own personality to it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, you, you, you tell it right. You can really overlook some things and, and you don't realize how much work has to go into things to get them to, to animate. People think maybe there's a, a quick plugin that can do it for me, but it's not always the case. It no. is, it is about sort of experimenting and, and, and trying to do it for yourself. And even if there was, see, what you'd end up with is, a, is an end product that looks the same as so many other end products and yeah, therefore exactly. has no value whatsoever. So, yeah, it's, it's, you know. it's not going to be seen as, as, as original or mm. different. It's just something that's been seen and been re replicated and duplicated. Yep. So um, it's definitely, you know, wise to, to have a look at how you can, it, you know, add your style and your voice yep. to something which is kind of how I've always tried to approach things. And, um, you know, crediting as well, crediting is important on social media for if you're a designer that's going to do something like this and it's very similar, then at least, you know, credit the artists because then, and plus then they can share your work and their stories and, you know, it's yeah. good, for, good, for, good for both parties, really. Yeah. Um, it may well be an opportunity to yeah. engage with somebody who you've admired in that way, you know. Into Ex exactly exactly yep. it's exactly what i i would do and still do if you know there's like mm. designers out there that i still sort of really look up to then i can you know i might create a piece inspired mm. by them and you know make sure i tag them in it and you know make sure it's my own sort of slant and it's a bit different but you know it's, it is it's a great way to connect with yeah. with people and give them you know build relationships and bonds which is also super important so this is looking quite cool now Got a bit more fun and positivity to it, and a bit more life. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. It's just got a nice movement, it's full of life. So, I need to start thinking of things from other letters to do now. So, normally, if I was kind of planning this um, for a client, then I would put more thought into what each letter is doing rather than just kind of doing it on the on the fly and you know just trying to there's nothing wrong with kind of just winging it in a way because you end up with some really cool results but um yeah it's it does help to kind of sort of plan sometimes what you're going to do um especially if you don't want things to look all the same so i might introduce another sort of revolving box Could really do with a sixth color here. But what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to start animating this one. Yep. I'm going to move these boxes in from the side from the kind of get go. And then actually, we're just going to duplicate some layers for further later use. So, again, I'm, I'm here now, I'm looking at how long my animation is. So, whatever I'm starting to animate and planning. I'm making sure that it's going to be able to be looped easily because um, there's nothing worse than kind of doing all this work and then realizing that your animation is in the loop. So I'm going to start linking these together. So you can see you get a nice sort of movement there. What I might do is because what I'm basically thinking about is how I can introduce what the next color is going to be. So after that shifted over and because yeah. I've only got a limited amount of colors here. Um, you are kind of snookered for something that isn't going to immediately yeah. merge into a neighbor, right? That's the, yeah, 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 exactly. So what I might do is I'm going to come back to my U. The only and thing I could think of there would be to swap out the black for the clover leaf for another of the cream and then use black there. But that would work. That, that's yeah. perfect. Yeah. yeah. Very good thinking. Yeah, yeah, that's ideal. And then yeah, I can make this. Yeah. Nice one. Save me there. <laughs> no worries. It's all right. I can see the problem. I just Yeah. yeah. This is the this is the thing. I mean, this happened when I was doing 
um, you know, when I did client work, when I was doing like 36 days of type, I was, I was doing these animations and yeah. it's, it is, that's all part of it. You know, part of the process is think like problem solving as you go. It's, yeah. um, it's kind of like key. Yeah. Really is. Yeah. That's going to work nicely. Yeah. Um, that, I think that'll be, that'll be good. And, and of course, for the people watching, don't forget that Matt's actually doing this, telling you about it at the same time, talking about, <laughs> talking about different aspects of his work and his life. So, you know, it's, it, to yeah. keep all of those threads going <laughs> this is and your hands still it. working yeah yeah this is exactly it. i've not done many yeah. streams so if i if i lose track sometimes it's yeah it is it's quite tricky to kind of juggle but um it's a good challenge and it's, it's no, man, fun. you're doing good you're doing it's just fun grand to, fun, <laughs> fun to talk so i've basically just messed around with the sort of the weight of this letter yeah. so that when i do switch my blocks we get a nice different basically a change um, scale up uh, reverse these and because I've messed with the expression on that I'm just going to copy that use that so Dylan is saying in the chat that he's always been intrigued by your work since seeing it on Instagram and Dribble. Yes. Loving seeing the process. Uh, and David Glissman is saying hi. Hello. There you are. Hello. So I'm now just flicking through quickly. To see. So what I could do is, so here I'm just pressing uh, U on the keyboard to get all of my active keyframes up. It's a yep. good shortcut rather than sort of clicking through and opening all your boxes and yeah, yeah. messing around with stuff, which I was find really handy. Yeah. Um, I'm just now just thinking about how I want this to continue animating. Cause what would be ideal is to get it on a two second loop. So then it can repeat three times. Yeah. That would be ideal. So what I might do is I'm going to do is I'm going to chuck these in here, just reset my keyframes. You can do that by clicking oh, command clicking or, um, Function F9 is a good way to get easy ease up. And I'm going to select these again. Just select how I think I want it to, to kind of, to sort of come out fast, but then mm. also leave slower. So you get like a nice, nice sort of push. Yeah. So that's quite cool. And then what I might do is, because I know that's finished finish its animation for this sort of process i'll delete the rest of that just so i don't get confused and then what i'll do is i'll probably because um some of this stuff i'm switching anchor points you, you can add um don't know if you know if there's an expression to quickly switch anchor points but you can add um you can do it on transform but um sometimes it can get a bit, get it gets gets a bit messy so yeah what i mean is basically because i now I want now this box, excuse me, to scale from the top. Mm -hmm. So moving the anchor point. So now when it scales, shift those over a minute. Oh, the reference point. Yeah, 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 yeah. Did yeah. you mean the reference point? Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so basically because I'm switching anchor points now, it's going to compress in a different way. So it's going to go yeah. nice and sort of that way and this way. Yeah. Um, but what I think I'm going to do there's again change my mind i don't really like how that i think it's going to get a bit repetitive um so what i might do is i might bring this in so you get a second on it there and then uh yeah let's take that to zero so you see where i'm going in a minute mm -hmm. so now get like a nice sort of different direction kind of push. Mm. Um, and the great thing is with 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 a character like a, an uppercase Y like that is you've got symmetry through the vertical axis. Yeah. So it gives you a lot of options there. You could kind of split and fold. And yeah, definitely. But I mean, you could do all of these things if we weren't in the minute of, in the middle of ninety minutes sessions. <laughs> you know, yeah. All afternoon, you could. <laughs> oh yeah, you could go to town. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely could. 
So I'm now just looking at the mayor. I'm just trying to get, there we go, get my repeat in. That's my bottom layer showing. So if I clean up again. So you see there's a bit of a gap. Show my background. That's because when I got my speed graph, uh, it's all over the place. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, you can press command click and reset them, yep. or you can just go to keyframe resistant. And I normally go easy ease because then that resets them. And yep. if I make these the same, yeah, nice, nice sort of box movement now. Yeah. So cool. There you go. Yeah. Nice. So how long is that? That's one. So David is remarking on uh, how clean your After Effects looks. With a big screen <laughs> like that, mine is full of open windows side by side. <laughs> Man. Yeah. <laughs> got to got to keep tidy. Yeah. Lose your, lose your mind. Um yeah. but I've seen like other people's like you see stuff on on YouTube over the other sort of creatives and their after effects setups and yeah some of them look uh look they look yeah the thick intense. stuff of nightmares yeah yeah, yeah. I've, I've seen it's uh I don't know why people work like that. You know, when you when you can switch workspaces so quickly and make yeah, something yeah. that fits, it's just yeah, totally. It's, but it's, and it's not just an After Effects thing. I see it in Illustrator all the time. I see it in Photoshop all the time. You know, people with effectively working through a small letterbox because yeah. they've got so much stuff. Yeah, yeah. It freaks me out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, know, I know what you mean. Um, it's like if I'm working on a um, Instagram story. Don't know if it's still set up well so i'll switch to portrait so yep. there if i've got like a super long comp of like yep. 2000 pixels i can fit it in and there's yep. less messing around um messing around with where things are it's just easier to view that's kind of the there you the go beauty, and it's no effort at all right you can just no, no. do it straight away it doesn't you know just go straight back it's yep. super easy yep. it makes life a lot easier and it's you got it's it's there to be used and it's there to make your life easier for this kind yep. of stuff so so yeah, it's looking great. So because yeah, as you mentioned, pre-comping because this has got a whole lot of layers. I'm gonna right-click that pre-compose. So that is my Y. And now that's nice and tidy. Yeah. Like that. So my last full letter. So what I was gonna do with this one. It's all right. Tim's just remarking in the chat that I'm sat here combing my beard. It's what I think. While I'm thinking, I comb my beard. <laughs> it's got no, no beard to stroke. No, you know, but but I, it's, I do it. I do it either to just relax while I'm while I'm absorbing something, or yeah, just to watch. which is not the case today. Or if I'm about to look sinister because I'm going to tell someone off. <laughs> <laughs> nice, brilliant. So I'm trying to think what to do with my C here. So what I might do is I might try and duplicate it. So get mm. two C's kind of coming out from each other. Um, so to do that, what I think I might do is, again, looking at my overshoot, I can do this with position, but because I'm going to be changing the weight, I like to do it with um, the path. Um, it just, it makes more sense to me. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think about what, how I'm going to do that. Okay. So what would be nice is... I could do... One, two, three. I could just start shifting these a little bit. This is just to give it a bit of kind of bounce when it does this. tidy with that there's i'm going to shift this right over at the same time kind of roughly change the weight yeah 
it does help that you've got good clean vectors there there's no uh, no extraneous points yeah that's that's exactly yeah. it that's why yeah. you know that finding that that perfect font is um yeah. is key because otherwise you do you end up with um a minefield of vector points and yeah, it makes it makes your job impossible yeah so what i'm doing here is i'm just kind of duplicating up my c so that now it goes pops into two which is quite cool nice but what i would like to do is i'm now gonna now i'm gonna copy this first keyframe make it thick again yep so this is just to save me having to guess the weight so try and get it in the same place now it pops and changes weight which is nice quite cool again looking at my speed graph trying to make my speed graph nice so now it's got a nice punch of weight change and obviously the beauty is I probably should have done this for one really first because what I want to do is um, save myself time and duplicate this one and move this back over here because when you when you copy paths um, it copies the exact position yeah so I would I'd end up with everything on this side basically yep. so again a nice kind of Copy these, easy copy. Nice. And then what I think I'm going to do is, because again, I want this to loop within uh, three seconds. So actually, I'm going to scrap that. This is where um, clones quite handy on this panel because I'll clone those keyframes and it copies um, both layers instead of just one layer. Yeah. Which is super handy. So I'm just going to see how that's looking. That's quite It cool. is great. After, After Effects is fantastic. Yeah. It, it's, it just makes life easy. <laughs> when mm. you, when you know your way around it and you've got your, style set or your sort of techniques and your shortcuts in mind you know it is it's great it does become like your bread and butter so i just want to replicate that side so it's symmetry nice and then what i might do is I might just offset one of them so you get a bit more so you get like a nice push and then what I'm also going to do quickly is because I don't like how that's got this really awkward feel there when they're together yeah. is I'm going to draw a quick mask okay so just a really rough shape, which is then going to. Oh, I see. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. now, when I mask that, I need to sort the path out. You instantly, when that first push comes in the center, you don't get that awkward shape. Yep. So what I need to do is go to the path on my mask, line it up with where I'm at with that. Yeah. And then just kind of match this other shape so that you don't get any cut off. Yep. So it's seamless. And just shift over again. So it looks kind of messy, but you don't get that really awkward yeah. kind of shape now. I'm just going to ease them just because it makes it easy. So no good reason to have a full extended keyboard when, yeah. <laughs> when, yeah. when you want to go backwards and forwards between frames. Yeah. Yeah. It can be a, a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. 
it does help. Yeah. So. so we've got about 10 minutes uh, left, which is fine. So there's no rush. We're, we're, all, we're all good. But uh, cool. don't forget, people... Uh, here in the chat, if you want to carry on chatting when we are done, don't forget you can join our Discord. And the link for that is just appearing in the chat right now. Tim's adding it in, so fantastic. Join us there. People chat all day and all night, not continuously, um, most of the time anyway. But, you know, it's always great to drop in and have a little bit of a chat. Nice. That's quite cool. So I've got my C loop. And then I'm just going to split those layers in half, duplicate them. So now it's playing over my six second mark, which is decent. Nice. Happy with that. It's a nice sort of punch to it as well, which is what I try to do. Mm -hmm. And then for me, Clover, I'm just going to do something simple. And I'm going to start it off nice and small. Again, I'm just thinking of how long to have this because I want it to loop perfectly. And then I might bring it kind of nice and big like that. Yep. Uh, I'm going to loop that so I get a nice seamless loop. I have to copy all my expressions. So it's got a nice kind of feel to it now. And then just to give it a bit more fun, which is another kind of style I work on a lot, is I'm gonna get some kind of color repeats going. So duplicating up my layers. And then so now everything's set the same. And what I tend to do is I tend to drag these out of view and then offset each one. I might have done this in the wrong order. So now you get like a cool you get like a cool radiating feel. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but I think what I want to do is do the way around. Yeah, it's better. And then I'm just going to drag these over. So I'm trying to basically get a nice clean repeat here. Drag these down so I can see the offset. And then if I drag it so my starting looped keyframe is beyond the front, I get like a nice sort of expanding. Amazing. It's like some sort of electrostatic stress toy that is. It's incredible. Isn't it just? Yeah. It's very much, yeah. very much like that. Very electrostatic. Yeah. So, yeah. And then, yeah, I'm kind of really happy with that. That bleed mm. I'm not bothered about because it's just, you know, it's, it's a short sort of keyframe. Um, you don't really notice it. And I don't really have to mask anything off or pre-compose this because it's hidden due to the layers. Yeah. But, I mean, I could just pre-compose. Let's make it pretty straightforward, isn't it? Yeah. The um, So this might, I, I don't want to dive into spoiler territory, but for output, because After Effects no longer outputs GIFs, right? It hasn't done for... Yes. for a few years so are, are there a kind of two paths that i see from here immediately without diving into the, the territory of another application one of those is is outputting a photoshop sequence mm -hmm. by a media encoder or yeah. actually diving straight into photoshop with it so i'm curious to see what your approach is or if you're going to use one that i do not know of so yeah, loads of things there's, there's things like gif gun and other plugins mm. you can get that a messy oh yeah I forgot but, that. yeah yeah um mm. it's really it can be really straightforward um, mm. so if i go to export this yep. um just as quick time quick time's fine yep. um just, just render it and then if i chuck this into photoshop my mov file yeah straight away um plays in the timeline which is great sometimes you know i play with the colors in here so i'll add a saturation layer Yep. And just maybe give it a bit of a boost or, you know, see if there's something else. That's quite cool, actually. <laughs> um, and then either file, export, render video. Yep. Save that as an MP4. Or 
go to this is where I wish I had a fast computer. File, um, export, save for web. Yep. And that's where you get to your GIF settings. Yep. Um, that's one of the things that bugs me about them calling that legacy. I mean, it, you know, because for some things yeah. there isn't a replacement in uh, no. in the modern export settings. No, there's not. Yeah. They need to. I think a rewording of that would be really lovely. I get why they're yeah. doing it, but you know. I know. Yeah, I, I totally yeah. get what you mean. Mm. Um, I've never really understood the whole the whole legacy thing. It's kind of just been been beyond me. I've never had to really deal with it. Mm. But yeah. Um, so here I'm saving for web, saving it as a GIF. Um, yep. you, know, you can mess with all these. This is what you're looking at, the file size down here. Yep. Um, look at it because I've got six colors. I might try my look at 16 colors, see, watch this file size if it goes down. It's not really worth it. Um, I'm going to take off lossy because I think that's why I'm getting some of these really awful sort of shapes there. Um, 1.3 megs, not bad. So if I save this to my desktop, now onto my desktop. There's my GIF. There we are. There's my GIF. Nice. Moving perfectly. Unless this yep. is where I spot the mistake that's been glaring the whole session. All right, we're good. We're good. No. So, Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. That's it. Wow. I'll tell you what, you ha it's very rare for a guest to run almost exactly to time. That's <laughs> you know, the, 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 the addition of the clover, I was going to try and do a, uh, a constant radiating sort of effect. Yeah. Uh, but luckily, I have that, that little cheeky shortcut there of just doing a, a simple radiate. Um, yeah. It saved me there. Otherwise, we would have been on for about 20 more minutes. No, that's, that's grand. Well, it works awesome. really, really well. Well, I mean, everybody's really enjoyed it here in the chat. There's been everything's been really positive, really enjoyed it. Marvelous work. Uh, thanks so much. It's from Jane. Um, Umicorn is rewatching. Uh, Arturo says, "Great dude, loads of applause." Uh, yeah, so yeah, really enjoying it. Thank well, you. thank you everybody. Thanks everyone for joining us, Matt. Thank you so so much. It's been real pleasure. No problem. Uh, thanks for having me. Hanging out with you for an, an, uh, 90 minutes. It's, I was going to say an hour, and I was thinking, no, it's more than an hour. 90 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's been really grand, and yeah, I hope we see you uh, again here. Uh, on Adobe Live. I'm sure Definitely. we will. Definitely. Sure we will. Fantastic. Up for so, that. great stuff. Well, it just leaves me to say uh, thanks everybody for watching. Do join us again on Friday. We've got uh, Nick Leafheber uh, on with, uh, I think, Natalie. Natalie's probably on on Friday. Uh, they're doing collage and illustration. So, again, it's more illustration week. So, we've had a bit of animation uh, in there. So, really, really good. And uh, until then, Take care, have fun. Don't forget, you can always watch on demand and join the Discord, but I'll see you soon. Take care now. Bye, Matt. Bye-bye. Thanks so much. Bye. Thanks.